Okay, so let's look at another example. Um, here we have the three premises. And we're being asked to prove that R follows from these three premises. So if we think about it, we can actually sort of prove it to ourselves, okay? So we've got P or Q, and we've got not P, and we've got if Q then R. Okay, so notice that um, it, the first one says, you know, P or Q. The third premise says not P. So what, what can we automatically conclude here by the rule of disjunctive syllogism? And uh, if that's new to you, uh, we'll cover that rule of inference later on. So disjunctive syllogism tells us that if you've got P or Q and you've got not P, then Q follows. So Q follows from, from what? From P. or Q and not P. Okay, so you can have cake or ice cream and you can't have cake, so therefore you must have ice cream. Okay, so the second premise then is if Q then R. So we have Q. We know that if Q then R. And by the rule known as modus ponens, we know that if we have Q and if we have if Q then R as premises, we can conclude that R follows. Now what we've done is we've started to introduce some rules of inference at this point, but uh, that'll, that'll, we'll be talking a lot more about that later on. But for now, the, the method of proof we're using isn't to use rules of inference. Instead, it's to lay out all of the possible sets of combinations of truth values for the sentences and uh, to check whether it comes out true. So, well, first step, of course, is to convert our nice argument into a single sentence. So we'll take all of this, and again, we'll read it the way we did earlier, as saying something like, if this, and this, and this, then this, okay. So if this and this and this, then this, okay? And this is what we have here. If P or Q and Q, if Q then R and not P, then R. Okay, so we've taken the argument and we've converted the argument into a single sentence and we're going to try and prove that the argument is a tautology. Lay out the truth tables. Now notice we have three variables here. We have three, se uh, three declarative sentences. Uh, we've got P, we've got Q, and we've got R. So the first thing we've got to do is we know that we're going to have 2 to the N 2 to the power of n rows. These are rows, remember? These are the columns. We'll set up our columns in the usual manner. And we'll remember our conventional combinations of variables, or truth values rather. So P, Q, and R. So it's going to be the four T's, T, 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 F, 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 F. etc. And well, let's go ahead and do that. Whoops. There we go. So here are our conventional set of truth values. 
got the four T's, the four F's, two T's, two F's, two T's, two F's, under Q. And then for R, we've got T, F, 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 T, F. Okay. Now, as we saw previously, this exhausts all the possible combinations of truth values for these three variables. So we're going to go ahead and fill in um, consistently all of the other instances of P, Q, and R. Let's go ahead and do that. That's what we get. So now we've, under all instances of Q, we'll list T, 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 F, 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 F. Under all list instances of uh, Q, we'll list T, T, F, F, T, T, F, F, T, T, F, F. And under all instances of R, we'll alternate T, F, T, F, T, F, T, F, T, F. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do some work. <coughs> Well, we know we're going to be looking for the main logical operator, which we, we know at this point that that's this. It's joining this R here to all of the stuff over here on the left. Okay, so going in then and looking at, you know, what's most important, what's least important, we notice that this AND joins all of this, the not P to all the stuff within these parentheses right here. Okay. We notice that this AND joins these two guys and these two guys. And then finally we've got this joining P and Q here and the implication joining Q and R here and the negation of course is applying to the P in this case. Okay, so that's the that's the setup. So the first thing I did was I went ahead and I evaluated or I applied the negation. So we applied the negation operator to the to the P. Oops, oops, sorry. So negation just takes the truth values here and flips them so all the T's become F's and all the F's become T's. And the negation here only applies to the to the to P. We know that because of the, the way the parentheses are set up. Okay. Okay, so once we've done the negation of P, then we can move on and take a look at the uh, the other two operators, the horseshoe and the wedge, the horseshoe and the disjunction, implication and disjunction, and evaluate those guys. We know that, for example, over here, the, the disjunction is only false when both disjuncts are false, and that only happens in these two cases case 7 and case 8. Okay, so then the next thing to do would be to take care of the, um, the horseshoe right here. And we know that the horseshoe only gives false when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So there's one case, case 2 see if there's another. There's another. In all other cases it's going to give true, so T, T, that's good. F, we know it's going to come out true. T, T, we know it's true. So these are the two false cases. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now, well, you know, if we wanted to, we could just strike this stuff here and here. We could strike the values under the Q and the R. Now, why would we do that? Whoops. Why would we do that? 
Well, because over here, right, this right here is the value of if q then r as a whole, so we don't need to take the constituent values into account. Similarly, we've got p or q. This is the value of p or q. Yeah, we could ignore this as well. So now these three are the values that are relevant for the rest of the proof. Four, I guess, these four. Okay, so let's go ahead. Next thing we'll do, it would make sense to go ahead and try to join the um, these guys figure out what the value is for joining P or Q and if Q then R with the conjunction. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so then this is the value of this entire part of the formula here. Okay, so everything within, whoops, these parentheses, I should say, its value is this, T, F, T, 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 F, F, F. Okay, so, and rem at this point, remember, we don't have to worry about all of that. We don't have to worry about all this stuff. All we care about from this part of the work is the stuff that's highlighted here falling under this operator. Okay, so now we're going to join all of this to not p. The value of not p, of course, is right here. So we're going to say, okay, we're joining t and f, f and f, etc. So we know that the conjunction operator only gives true when they're both true. Do we have an instance of that? Uh, yes, we do, right here. So this and this. Okay, so this will be true right here. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so then here we have the entire value of everything on this side. Here's R, so now we're going to join the values of R with the values of everything to the left side of the parentheses, namely the highlighted column using the implication. And we know that the horseshoe only gives false when the antecedent is true and the condition and the consequence is false. Do we have that case? No. We only have one case of a true antecedent and that has a true consequence. And so this is going to come out all true as we'll see. There we go. So the value then of this entire thing, we proven that this statement is a tautology. Under all circumstances, R will follow from all this stuff. If all of this stuff, then R must be the case. So we're going to say that our original problem, yep, is valid. Okay.